What's going on Zoom fans? Welcome to the pool. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you all the different swimming equipment that you might consider as a beginner swimmer. Now this video is intended for people who are thinking about getting into swimming for fitness. Maybe you wanna do a triathlon. Maybe you're trying to lose weight through swimming. Make sure you watch this video until the very end because I'm not only going to share the different swimming equipment that you might need, like the equipment right here on this table, but a few different tips to get started in your swim training. So if you guys are new here, welcome to My Swim Pro, where we share the latest and greatest to help you take your swimming to the next level. So if you wanna swim faster, if you wanna improve your health, if you wanna improve your performance, this is the place to go. So make sure you subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let me know what questions you guys have down below in the comments. When you're just getting started, you actually don't need much equipment at all. All you need is a swimsuit. Now, when it comes to the actual swimsuit that you choose, there's a lot of different options out there, but the most important thing is to be comfortable. So if you're a guy and you have some swim trunks or maybe something like shorts that are good to use in the water, that'll work totally fine. If you have a jammer or a speedo or a brief or something like that, that works as well. And on the ladies side, same thing. You just need to be comfortable in your swimwear so that way when you get in the water, you're comfortable and you're ready to go. Okay, so we're about to get in the water now and something that you might be considering is a pair of goggles. Now, a great pair of goggles will obviously keep the water out of your eyes. And this is something that's really important. You don't need it on your first swim, but I highly recommend getting a pair of goggles and I'll link one of my recommended pairs in the description down below. But what you wanna do is find a pair that fit comfortably on your face and that will allow you to go through the workout without getting the chlorine in your eyes. And you can actually see what you're doing and it'll allow you to stay in the water for much, much longer. So definitely recommend getting a great pair of goggles. Something that is a great idea, especially for the ladies, is to have a swim cap. What that does, it not only protects your hair from the chlorine, your, your hair still will get wet with a swim cap. So it's important to know that but it's also gonna make you more comfortable when you swim because the hair isn't sort of getting tangled all on your face and it's gonna get in your eyes and your goggles and in your mouth or something like that. And even for the guys, it makes you feel more streamlined in the water. Not only that, it makes you swim faster. So you don't have to wear a swim cap, but for the ladies, I strongly encourage it. And for the guys, it's something that you could consider down the road as well. Once you have your suit, cap, and goggles, you can consider adding some extra equipment to your swim bag. These next few items are all optional to use in your training, but they can have some great benefits to your speed and performance. First, let's talk about fins. Fins are a fantastic piece of equipment that I recommend for beginner, intermediate, advanced, and even elite swimmers for a number of reasons. Now, fins can actually come in a lot of different sizes, shapes, colors, and even flexibilities, but there are really two main kinds of fins. We have the short fins and long fins. Short fins are what I have here. They're only a few centimeters longer than your actual foot. Long fins are a little bit more like scuba fins, and they might even be up to a half meter to a meter longer than your actual foot. Now the difference between these two is that the longer fins are more designed for developing your underwater dolphin kick, and if you were to go scuba diving or snorkeling, these fins would be great. If you're in the pool and you're more focused on improving your technique, then you definitely want to have a pair of shorter fins because these more closely mimic how you actually swim. Shorter fins give you a little bit more extra propulsion and keep your body higher in the water. This can help you swim faster and develop your technique more easily. Get a pair of fins that are flexible and comfortable. There are a few different models and they all vary in different stiffnesses and flexibility. The more flexible the fin, the more beginner friendly it's going to be. You might not go quite as fast with a flexible fin as you might with a more stiff one, but you'll definitely go faster and it'll help you work on drills and kicking. Now the next piece of equipment that I recommend is a kickboard. Kickboards come in a lot of different shapes and sizes, but in general, this is what a kickboard looks like. Again, it's not required, but it's a natural progression after getting a pair of fins, then I would recommend potentially a kickboard. You can actually train very well without ever using a kickboard because you can kick in streamline on your back or on your stomach. Now kickboards are good for varying how you kick in the water and they can be used for drills as well. So if you're a beginner, some of these drills will actually work better with a kickboard. Next, we have a pull buoy. Now a pull buoy is great because it allows you to swim with a higher body position. 
You put the pole buoy between your thighs and it basically acts as a flotation device to help you swim a little bit higher in the water. A big challenge that beginner swimmers have is sinking legs. Remember, the water is 800 times more dense than air, so your legs are going to drag through the water and it's going to slow you down. When you use a pull buoy, it's going to lift the midsection and lower half of your body to help you swim with a proper body position. Some swimmers, especially beginners, can actually swim a lot faster with the help of a pull buoy. It basically teaches your body how to maintain the proper body position and it'll help you improve your technique and speed when you aren't even using it too. I definitely recommend a pull buoy after you've gotten a pair of fins. The next piece of equipment I have is a snorkel. Now a snorkel is a fantastic piece of equipment that you can use at every level. Stick the snorkel in your mouth, secure the straps on your head, and swim normally. You're going to breathe through the tube. The first main function of the snorkel is technique. Because you're not turning your head to breathe, you get the opportunity to focus your head on its positioning. Your body position and also your catch and even your rotation can be worked on with a snorkel. It's super valuable to work on all of these things independent of working on the breath, so it's a great tool to use for drill sets in the beginning of a workout or even during the main set to really focus on developing your technique. The second function of a snorkel is actually more focused on your endurance and your aerobic capacity. Because when you breathe through a tube for an extended period of time, it's actually a little bit more difficult because you're restricting the way that you're breathing. And this restriction allows you to develop more stamina and breath control in the water. You'll feel this almost immediately after you swim with a snorkel. So whether you're doing 25 meters or a 50 meter swim, I always recommend starting out with some 25, so maybe 425s or 825s to get things started with the snorkel. Eventually, you'll work your way up and you'll be doing turns and maybe even 50s, 75s, and 100s. But I definitely recommend starting with 25s to start with the snorkel. To really get the full aerobic benefits of a snorkel, you're going to have to use it a pretty good amount, ideally between 30 and 50% of your total volume to get that aerobic capacity benefit. Regardless of how you use it, a snorkel is a great tool to work on technique and I highly recommend it. Next up, I have paddles. Now you'll notice I actually have a few different kinds of paddles with me because paddles come in all shapes and sizes. They slide onto your hands and you can have one or several straps to keep them in place. But what they do is they actually increase the surface area that you pull with. If you think about how you pull the water, of course you have your hand and you have your early vertical forearm but paddles can actually increase the size of your hand, temporarily of course, which can make you go faster due to this increase in surface area. But more importantly, it's actually adding resistance because your hand is larger and that actually makes you stronger over time. So think of your paddles as fins for your hands. Now I definitely don't recommend paddles when you're an absolute beginner because you're still working on developing that technique. So definitely work with fins before you start working with paddles. But once you've gotten the rhythm of things and you're trying to take it to the next level, then I would recommend getting a pair of small paddles. You want to start with smaller paddles rather than larger because paddles introduce a lot of stress on your body. Remember, it's like having resistance in the water. So if you don't have the right technique, then it's not really going to work out well for you and you could even get injured. Paddle size has really nothing to do with how big your hands are. It's really about how strong you are in the water. So for example, you can see a smaller swimmer who has a lot more experience swimming with relatively large paddles and someone who's a lot bigger swimming with smaller paddles because they're just getting started. So as you get stronger, you can work your way up to larger and larger paddles and you'll see the benefit almost immediately. You'll notice that my hand paddles are slightly larger than my hand. The final piece of equipment that I've been wearing the entire time is actually a smartwatch. As you start to get more into swimming, a smartwatch can really help you track your laps and see your heart rate, but there's so much more to it. You can also get guided workouts, and that's really what it takes to get your training to the next level. You're not just swimming back and forth, you're actually following a series of sets so you can really maximize your time in the water. Time is the most valuable thing that we have, and we want to make sure that we're really taking advantage of it and take advantage of every minute in the water. 
So if you're looking to take your swimming to the next level, maybe you wanna go from sitting on the couch to doing a 1K swim or even a mile in the pool, or you wanna do your first swimming competition, make sure you check out the My Swim Pro app available for iPhone and Android and get started with a personalized training program just for you that walks you through a workout set by set. And even if you don't have a smartwatch, you can still use these training programs and the workouts to get you where you wanna be. All of that information that I mentioned in this video is linked down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what questions you have down below in the comments and let me know what swimming equipment you're most excited to try out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Happy swimming.